This is the largest financial asset bubble in history. There is no soft landing for this economy, says Harry Dent, founder of HarryDent.com. All signs point to a recession, and we've just finished the first of three major market dips, Daniela Cambone tells in the final episode of this year's summer series. We're in the biggest demographic recession in history, Dent says. He believes cleaning up bad debt is necessary and predicts trillions of dollars will be sold in commodities such as stocks, real estate, and gold. Dent claims the Fed's tightening measures will fail faster than they think. Listen to the full podcast to understand what's going on for real estate, stock, and gold market. Are we witnessing largest market asset bubble in history? Please follow us on YouTube and open your notifications for further podcasts. Enjoy. Harry Dent. Harry is the founder of HS Dent and the editor of the HS Dent Forecast. He's also the founder of Dent Research and the executive ed- editor for Economy and Markets Newsletter. Uh, Harry, always good to see you. Yeah, nice to be back. Well, I'm happy to have you back because the last time I thought, hmm, is Harry going to come back to the show? I kind of held your feet to the fire with uh, when it came to your timeline uh, of you calling a stock market crash. But I have to give you kudos now because the last time we spoke, you said the biggest stock market crash of our, of our life would happen in 2022. Um, so just to frame things up for folks, it was the worst first half of the year in 50 years. And this year is already one of the worst in terms of big daily declines with the S&P 500 uh, falling 2% or more on 14 occasions, putting 2022 in the top 10 list according to data uh, compiled by Bloomberg. So, congrats. And there's more to talk. If these things are not over in one year, this will take two to three years to work out. So there's okay. plenty more to come. Okay, so I want to dissect this all, unpack this all, because as we're speaking, the S&P is heading into its third consecutive week of wins here. Uh, Many experts saying the likelihood of retesting June lows now seems quite slim, given the really robust uh, jobs reports, uh, which have eased recession fears. Uh, The market is also saying that it can withstand more rate hikes from the Fed. Harry, where do you see things now? Okay, a a crash like this, you'll see three waves of crash. What we've seen is the first wave down. And of course, that's the most important one because if it's 10 or 20 percent, then then it may not be the beginning of a larger crash. We might and we can always go to new high. This one was 35 percent on the Nasdaq, 25 percent on the S&P. So that 30 percent plus range qualifies it as yes. This looks like the first crash which means now we're in the bounce from that crash where everybody can say, oh, it's over. And yeah, yeah, one, one good jobs report, okay? You know, how much is job stuff? All, all, we're still catching up from COVID and stuff. So we are in a recession. All the signs point towards a recession. Everybody says it's going to be shallow. That's what the experts say every time we have a recession. Here's the truth about this thing. This recession, and it started in 2008 9 which is really more a depressionary period from such a bubble of such a magnitude, that should have been deeper and longer. That crash should have gone into mid-2010 and been a lot deeper. Stocks should have been down 80%, not 50-some percent. So they blew us out of that. Now, despite stimulus, they overreacted to COVID, which was a huge mistake because now they have to tighten because they overreacted to COVID, and COVID is a temporary crisis by definition, not a long-term crisis, but the economy is getting weak again. Now, now I'm just let people figure something out for yourself real quick. Let me tell you what happened during COVID. $5.1 trillion in fiscal stimulus and $5 trillion in monetary stimulus in two years, almost half of GDP, and we're already falling into a recession again despite that, okay? It shows what I'm saying. The economy is weak because the baby boom peaked back in 2007. We're in the weakest part of that downturn demographically, the biggest demographic downturn in history, until about 2024, still a year and a half from now before we start to recover. So this this downturn is going to have to be deep to wash out all the debt and all the bubble stuff. We can't just come roaring out of this and say we're over it. This is the first wave down. We may be close to the end of this bounce. So, So consider, here's how it goes. A first wave crash down, 
two wave counter trend, okay, retraced 40 to 50%. We retraced about 40% now, so this could be over soon. Then you get the next wave down. That's called the third, the three wave. That should be the same size and length of this wave or more. So we're probably going to see another wave down from sometime this month into January of next year. And if the market's down into January 2023, just the January indicator would tell you the whole year is going to be down. So that'd be the next wave. Then you'll get a bounce. And then the final wave will come into late 2023 or early 2024. That's what you should expect after a bubble of this magnitude, especially one that's been stretched and stretched and stretched. The economy's never been able to wash out all this excess. 600 trillion of financial assets that are more overvalued than any time in history. Frankly, and I, and I show this in my newsletter, we've been telling our subscribers this, we have $600 trillion now in financial assets, six and a half times GDP globally, and that normally would be two times GDP in normal time. So this bubble has to unwind. That means hundreds of trillions of dollars of financial assets. What is that? Real estate, stocks, bonds, commodities, gold included in there, all have to deflate back down to normal so we can come out of this and we have to flush out bad debts, the highest debt ratios, can't even compare the debt ratios globally and domestically to the roaring 20s and past bubbles like this. So people need to understand, this is the greatest financial asset bubble in history. There is no soft landing to this period. There is no magic way to get out of it. Now that this thing is cracked this far, I've been telling our subscribers for months and years now, it'll come to a point where they keep stimulating, but it's not enough and the economy breaks down anyway. We are in the beginning phases of that and it's very, very likely this is going to continue. So don't listen to all of the clueless economists that never thought this could happen in the first place and saying, well, this will be a mild recession and the worst is over. I am telling you, it is not. And you are risking your assets if you do not take this seriously. All you got to do is be more conservative, be in the highest quality bonds while this crisis is happening. Now, all you need to be is out for about two years to let this happen. OK, if I'm wrong, you'll miss the last some minor gains after things have gone up so much that they're so overvalued. If I'm right, you're going to save your assets while most people, you know, are going to lose them and never get back to even again. Okay. This, that's what this is once in a lifetime. This is not another recession. It's not another 20 percent stock crash. This is going to be the biggest crash you have seen in your lifetime more comparable to the 30s, not quite that bad, and that you will see for the rest of your lifetime. That's what I am saying.